Good, Jim. Doing good. How you doing, Bob? Everybody good? We're a week away now. How are you feeling ahead of the latest time defense? Feeling good, man. Feeling like a champ. Can't wait. Nine days, I get to taste another cupcake. One that uh, I heard might pack a punch, so I can't wait for it. If you had to compare Alex Wolkowski to any one of your previous opponents, who do you think he's going to be most similar like? No one. No one. I, I, I hate when... Uh, I really don't like it when people say I fought a guy like Max and this and that, or fought, they fought a guy like me, and I just, it just made no sense to me. Oh, they jamming right now, huh? <laughs> oh, they turning down. But, uh, but uh, it makes no sense to me when they, when, when they compare fighters. They're like, oh yeah, I fought this guy, he kind of does stuff like this, but at the end of the day, it ain't me, you know? And I, n I never fought anybody like Alex, because Alex is the only one, you know? There's only one guy, and that's you, so. I just can't wait, you know. He uh, he presents a lot of questions for us, and me and my team sat down, and we believe we came up with a lot of answers, so I'm excited. Ahead of this fight, Alex is saying all the right things. You want a challenger to say that he's the guy to dethrone you, that he's got this confidence. You've been a champion for a while now. Can you talk about the difference in motivation for a challenger and the champion who's got to defend his title for the X and Alex? It's like GSP once said, you know. It's, uh, it's harder to... It's harder to defend a title than win it. Because if you think about it, when you're fighting for a title, you're trying to earn something brand new. And then when you're defending a title, you're just trying to re-earn something that you already have. You know? And uh, and, it, and it is what it is. You know? It's, we, that's when me and my team, we sit down and we, we look for questions in, in what these guys, we look for challenges and this and that. And, and we look for things that excite me, and excite me is is asking questions. You know, it's everybody keep talking about how uh, this guy has power. You know, everybody say, "Oh, Max, you're taller," but the guy got the reach. You know, I'm, I got little T Rex arms. I don't know what's going on. A lot of people is like, "You're tall. You have the reach, Max. Use your jab." I'm like, "Guys, look at the reach. My reach is shorter than everybody I fought, except for probably Frankie." But you know, at the end of the day, I'm just. I'm just excited, you know, I'm excited. Every every fight to me is a championship fight. I told you guys before I was a champ that I thought I was in championship fights and that's the way I carried myself. And that's the way I'm going to continue to carry myself, you know. Um, and with him saying um, that he's the one that's going to do this and that, you need that confidence. I don't, I don't, I want to fight a confident guy, you know. And, and he's, a, he's across the octagon come December 14 because of that confidence and I look forward to it. So you're talking about questions that you have to ask yourself and stuff. You've mentioned it a couple of times now. Is the biggest question in this fight his power? Is that what yeah, he has? It, his power, his uh, his cardio, his strength, his wrestling. Uh, dude is a striker too, so there's a lot of questions, you know, and and that's the thing that excites me. That's the thing that gets me up. Like, oh yeah, this and that, okay, you know. So we see what happens. You know, we're gonna we're gonna push every single question. You know, I believe I have the answers for it, and the beautiful thing we find out in nine days. So I can't wait for it. So what are the things you're doing to, to kind of motivate yourself and get excited because you have been a champ for a bit now, you have these defenses and you've run through some people. So so what what is getting you excited right now? Uh, you know, I just this is the, one of the biggest cards of the year. Um, like I said, if we're not going to UFC Hawaii, I'm bringing UFC Hawaii to the Ninth Island, and that's Las Vegas, baby. So that's what we plan on doing. You know, it, it's a huge fight. It's a big fight. I'll tell you guys right now, the crowd, the crowd there is going to be crazy, you know, um, the, the people there is going to be insane, you can see, you're probably going to see a bunch of Hawaiian flags <laughs> going there, marching the streets, so I can't wait, I, I, I'm excited for this fight, and it's just, it's, it's another, why not be excited with this guy, you know, it's another challenge, it's another challenge that a lot of people is questioning, you know, like this guy got this, this, and this, and I can't wait, you know, we sat down with my team, like I said, we sat down, we talked stories, uh, we think we figured it out, so the the hard part is done, fun part comes, uh, actually got one more hard part, you know, you know, everybody talk about the weight and blah, 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 but after that is, uh, you know, punch someone in the face today, so I'm waiting for it. Weight is okay? Weight is more, more than okay, you know, I, I feel good, I feel great, people keep talking to me about my weight and this and that, but at the end of the day, I always make that 145 limit and... 
you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to show the world why I'm, you know, I'm one of the best in the world. One of the best mixed martial artists. Not not a 45er. One of the best fighters in the world. So, I'm excited. He said um, at the press conference in New York that, oh, you know, you're, you're a big guy. I'm going to give you the opportunity to go up. I'm going to take your belt and go up to 145. Is, that, uh-huh. is going up still something that, that is on your mind? Yeah, going, yeah, you know, uh, I want to be the best mixed martial artist in the world. And being the best mixed martial artist in the world is not a guy who stays in his weight and dominates his weight. It, it is someone who's willing to go at whatever weight. So whatever is the best guys, best guys, whoever's the best guys in the world, you guys tell me, you know. I got I got a couple belts I want to fight for, you know. Uh, you know, the 55, of course. Uh, you know, you got Khabib because he's one of the best guys in the world. Uh, the nicest mother lover belt, you know. Stephen Wellman Boy Thompson hit me up. And the daddest man on the planet, you know, D.C., He's the heavyweight, you know, he was the heavyweight king. I still believe he is the heavyweight king. And at the end of the day, if that's, if that's the guys that I need to fight to be the best in the world, that's what we're going to do. So, you, so you, you can possibly be a two uh, belt champion, nicest ever ever and baddest ever ever maybe. Maybe you can challenge uh, Masvidal as well. That would be fun, you know. Uh, I like three pieces, I like a soda, and I like biscuits. So <laughs> tell them let me know. Max, with the move up to 155, are you viewing it as you're going to continue at featherweight and then if a right opportunity comes, you'll move up? Or are you going to look at it as, okay, after this title defense, it's time to move up and leave featherweight behind and you're going to make a drastic change to move up? We see what happens. You know, we see what happens. I don't know. You know, um, a king defends his throne and, and, and my throne is here at 45. And But if there's an opportunity at 55, why not? You know, if, uh, if it's defending or fighting for belts or whatever, I just, it's not even the belts that intrigue me. It's being the best muscle artists in the world that intrigue me. So if the best fighters in the world, whoever you guys think is the best guy, let me fight him. Let me add him. If he just has the belt, the belt is just, you know, the topping, you know, the cherry on top, you know. So at the end of the day, we see what happens, you know. I'm going to sit with my team. First things first, we got Alex. I ain't trying to look too far in the future. And um, we go from there. Not to look past Alex, but after him, it doesn't seem to be any clear-cut contender in better way. You know, you've got Korean Zombie, who'd probably need another win, then even Rodriguez, the IA, you'd probably think he needs a win. Is there another name after Alex you can see, like, that's the guy? Or is it time to maybe look at 155 for the next fight? It's MMA. It's MMA, man. Every every two weeks, there's a hot fighter. <laughs> so there, 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 there's the next one up every two weeks. So I, 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 I ain't too nervous about it. You know, that's not my, my, my goal ain't to look, look at guys, you know, winners focus on winning and, you know, whoever at the bottom of the mountain, they can keep climbing and that's what they're going to do. You know, whoever UFC, we're going to sit down after this fight, you know, hopefully everything goes good and we talk to UFC and whoever they want to put in front of me, then they will put in front of me. What did you think of the performances of some of the featherweights who've been in big fights, Yair, Zabid, and some of those guys? I, you know, I didn't really watch them. I didn't get to see some of the fights, but I heard they do. I heard they did really good. And it's really exciting, you know. Like, you hear names like Zabid and Yair, uh, uh, Yair is a flashy guy. You know, I, I, lo- I love his fighting style. Zabid is the same way. I love his fighting style. So, I think so. I think so. Those opponents is, is cool, you know. I think it would be great great matchups, great fights. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I got Alex in front of me. I ain't, I ain't looking uh, past him at all. Now, we had Tyron Woodley earlier in the year. He talked about, you know, if you ask all of the UFC champions who would be their favorite, he said they'd probably all say Max Holloway. <laughs> what does that mean to you when you got a guy who was on top for a long time giving you that, those kind of props? Uh, it means a lot, you know. T. Wood is, T. Wood is a good guy, great guy, great human being. A lot of the champions is just nice people, you know. So when you hear guys like this, you know, this is the type of guys that you look up and you model your, your career over, uh, after. And um, I just... Lost for words, you know. Lost for words, you know. It's uh, it's more than a nickname. I'm blessed. So we've heard you mention uh, that you've taken a more medical tests mm-hmm. after after the, the uh-huh. scare uh, a little while back. Can you give us any detail on what sort of tests you, you've been taking? I just sit down with my team. You know, me and my team, we, we sit down. Uh, we do uh, we do certain tests and stuff um, for my health and wise because one of our main goals, one of our main ideas. And, and my stuff that my team live by is uh, they work for Rush, they don't work for me. So everything is to make sure that I'm good so we can, make, we can be good for Rush. And uh, that's what we do, you know. I think so uh, recovery and stuff is super important. I mean, look at what LeBron James is doing. You know, he said uh, last year, he said that they, he spent $1.2 million on recovery stuff, period. You know, so that's what we focus on. You know, we focus on health, 
you know your health kind of get lost especially when like me i'm trying to i'm trying to fight four times and uh four times in a year and i'm just training and this and that so i got some of the greatest minds in mma behind me and um, they make sure i'm good um, all around just on, on a personal level you, you seem like a guy who's pretty raw raw ready ready for the action whenever uh it is it frustrating at all uh, kind of submitting to when it's time to rest when it's time to not train and just kind of sitting down when your coaches tell you so yeah it's crazy you know i get into i get into arguments with that man right behind the cameras over there all the time about about uh how how i should be doing stuff you know especially with training and stuff and, and then over training but that's why they're there you know what i mean they they they're with me they're with me till the wheels fall off but their job is to keep the wheels the wheels on and turn it nice and, and, and squeaky clean. So, you know, I, 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 I'm super grateful for them, and um, that's what they got to do. Has, has that, uh, the, the approach um, and the increased focus on your health, is that altering strategy-wise what, what your coaches have, have you working on? Actually, I, this is the best I ever felt. This is about every camp, every camp we learn something new about myself, and I get better every camp. And, and you guys get to see. You guys go watch my last performances. You know, the last, uh, the last Frankie one was great, and then, Tune in December 14th. We're going to put on a show. It's going to be an amazing one. Max, you joked about uh, going all the way up to heavyweight and fighting DC. But realistically, what is the heaviest weight class do you think that you'd be able to, to compete in and you know, possibly win the title there? Uh, you know, UFC won. They didn't have weight classes, so heavyweight is definitely there. But, you know, uh, uh, I, you know, I don't know about holding belts all at one time, this and that. But, you know, nobody really got three yet. So 170, I could see myself, you know, I'm only, I turned 28, you know, I just turned 28. I can see myself maybe going to even get into 85, being healthy and, and, and getting strong there, you know. Like, you know, I got five more years, six, uh, five, six more years in the sport. Who knows? I might pull a DC on you guys and fight to 40, you know. Uh, I'm sure the guy behind the camera is not shaking his head too well when I say that. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's what it is. You know, I think so. I can be big. Um, I, I'm 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 a Polynesian, Hawaiian, Samoan, and I'm probably the smallest Samoan slash Hawaiian you guys see. So I, I think the weight issue, you know, is it, not a problem. You know, it's just about getting in the gym, getting the weights, and and getting the actually packing on the muscle. Max, I wanted to ask you about some comments you made in an interview recently. You and Conor McGregor have this sort of weird relationship where you fire <laughs> little verbal jabs at each yeah, other, yeah. but then when things get serious, yeah. you're both very supportive of each other. Yeah. How would you describe your dynamic? Connor, that's my boy, you know, we be texting all the time. Oh, yeah. Nah, nah. <laughs> I was just joking, you know. Um, it's just, uh, it, you know, everybody, I even saw that we was talking about, like, there's a line that you don't cross, you know. And I think some people is misreading what I said. I said, there's a line that he didn't cross with me. And then whenever I, I did uh, something seriously happened with me, you know, with that Ortega stuff long ago before the first Ortega one that was booked, he was like the first guy asking like, you know, what is wrong with our champion, you know, and this and that. And then when I was walking to the Frank, to the Frankie Edgar stuff, I was walking in slow because the cameraman was telling me you need to walk slower. He the one that, you know, is like, what is going on? You know, he, he reached out and he always like uh, trying to aware people about how we look and stuff. So and I respect, you know, I, I respect that man a lot and what he did for the sport and even like a human being, you know, he, he comes up short just like anybody else, you know, just like anybody else. We're all humans. We all make mistakes and, you know, sometimes you just got to give a guy a chance and me and him, we just, uh, I don't know what it is, you know, we just respect it, we respect each other on that level and I always want to respect, you know, I'm excited that he's back in the sport and, um, you know, I can't wait to him go do his thing in January. How'd you see that fight with Serrani guy? We see what happens. It's fun, you know. We see what we we see what Connor comes, you know. We see if the Mystic Mac is back or and, and and the way he's training, but we get to see that fight, you know. So hopefully, I I I wish him a great training camp, and I you know I just can't wait to see him go back in there. Have you ever talked with uh, with Connor like one on one away from social media, away from cameras, just just you and him? Uh, when I fought him, DM or well, it, when, not really DM. When I fought him, I actually like. Uh, that, it's funny, it's a funny story. When I fought him, we was fighting, we were standing in line to go do our medicals. And it was just, it was me and him. And then he was using this cool, uh, high, like, it was like, like Hawaii shorts. I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, cool shorts, bro. And he was like, yeah, you like that, eh? He was like, he, he was like, he was like, he was like, he was like, it's a Hawaii vibe. I was like, that's dope. He's like, yeah, thank you. And then, then we went out there and we did the face off and he like kind of got in my face, so it kind of tripped me out. So I was like, oh wow, it's like this guy could turn it on, you know. So, but it, it is what it is. That's the only like thing talk I got to talk to him 
before a fight. <laughs> why do you, why do you, Whiskey, you uh, tweeted out last year, I believe, about you know going to Ireland with Jameson. Yeah. Were you just teasing him, or were you trying to get the matchmakers to start the fire? Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jameson is a great whiskey, though. <laughs> do, you, do you think? Do you think that that rematch is is, is destiny? Like it's gonna happen eventually, you and him? Yeah, you know, we we see what happens. You know, um, like I said, you know, if the Mystic Mac arrive, if if uh, if he wants to be like what he was uh, a couple years ago when he was the greatest mixed martial artist in the world, and he wants to be the greatest again, I'm sure we're gonna run into each other like that, you know. But uh, because he wants to be great, I want to be great. But if not, it is what it is, you know. If but if his mind is right, his mind is straight, and he wants to be the best, I'm sure, I'm sure we're gonna run into each other. So I'm not, I'm not sweating it too much. Nice. Nice. In, in preparation for this fight, what's, what are some of the different things uh, you've done in the training camp? You know, just another title defense. So what's, what's, what are the new things that you and your team did? Um, you know, one of the new things I was doing, you know, I think everybody's catching on that I'm like a T-Rex. I'm tall and I got short reach. Been trying to like stretch a lot more, get my reach a little bit longer, you know. <laughs> Alex, Alex got longer reach than me, so I've been stretching my, you know, doing my stretches a little bit longer, focusing. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can remeasure for this fight, and uh, hopefully, I got an answer something. Is it working? Oh wait, we about to see. Uh, next week when I check in, I'm like, we're remeasuring this right now. Let's say, let's say you beat Alex in this next fight, and there's no, there's no other featherweight, uh, especially now with Ortega being out of the fighting hands for you, Zombie. There's no other featherweight that really stands out for, for the next challenger. With your goal in mind of being the best MMA fighter in the world, would a fight in another division next be more intriguing against a top contender in one of those divisions rather than someone in featherweight who maybe hasn't done enough to get that, that shot next? Like you said, like I said, we see. You know, first thing first, thing first is Alex, you know, and, uh, and if an opportunity presents itself, you know, I'm not backing down from it. You know, I want to be... I want to be one of the greatest in this era, you know. Uh, as long as I live and as long as I fight, whenever I'm fighting, I want people to talk about like, oh man, he's one of the greats in 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 his time. So that's what I want to do, you know. But first things first, as a handful, you know, and um, can't be overlooking this guy, you know. Most of the times we see when guys overlook guys, you see what happens. So right now he got my full focus and. Uh, Sunday, Monday, whatever day after the fight, if everything go good, I'm gonna sit down with Dana and them, Hunter, and uh, we have that talk. Max, you've got. It's inevitable, inevitable. Basically, in every interview, something comes up about your Hawaiian heritage within the UFC of Hawaii. But I'm curious, when it comes to fighting, is there something distinctly Hawaiian about the way you fight? Are there, there are these concepts of like aloha and hana and mana. Is there something that's you know unique to all Hawaiian fighters, or something that you bring that's specifically Hawaiian? I mean, if you see all the other Hawaiian fighters, you know, it's just aloha. You see it. You know, most of us is like going to fight week and we're smiling, we're laughing, cracking it up. And when we get in there, we just, we just dogs, you know, it's crazy. You know, I just, I think it is something, you know, it's probably the air, you know, you guys need to come down, hopefully sooner than later, smell the air, you know, get in the ocean. The water is, uh, the, right now the waves is kind of big, so stay away from the ocean if you're in Hawaii. But, uh, but that's just it, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think, I think Hawaiians is just a little bit different. It's just, it's just we just wired a little bit different. Maybe uh maybe the wiring got crisscrossed or mat mismatched. I don't know what happened, but we just wired a little bit different. You seem to really be enjoying yourself at the press conference in New York last month, just kind of watching the headliners <laughs> go back and forth. What's the difference? I mean, you've carried basically the last few cards you've been on as the headliner. Now you get to sit back a little bit as the coming event and watch these guys, you know, bark and bark and bark. What's the difference, you know, in your role as a as a coming event as opposed to in the main? Uh, you know, not that much. You know, I just got to show up and fight. You know, um, I got I got to talk a little bit less of the pressure. That's that's always cool. You know, I I probably would have just talked about candy and cupcakes <laughs> if they kept asking me questions at the end of the day. But it's just uh, it's just cool to be a part of this big a big fight. You know, and th those two guys they got stuff and you know I wish I wish I was uh, a little bit lighter so I could grab my popcorn because things are getting heated up in there. So it's pretty cool. And you know, um, you know. There was a question about other UFC champions thinking that you're their favorite champion. You clearly have a good relationship with a lot of the guys. What are the other champions that you'd like to share a card with in the future if you could you know, do one of these two or three title fight cards? Uh, you know, uh, definitely DC. I want to fight with DC. I, I, I always wanted to get on that card. I was bummed uh, that, that last July one when we couldn't get on it. But uh, DC is definitely, I would, I would love to fight uh, fight with, who else, who else is the champions? Uh, 
Amanda, I'm getting this one. She's the GOAT, you know what I mean? So it's dope to be on a card with her. Uh, maybe Stylebender. Stylebender would be cool, you know? He, he, uh... He's a he's a dope striker, you know. I'm a dope striker. We fought on the same card again, but it'd be cool that we get to do it as champions. So, um, yeah, that's what Khabib would be fun, you know, f fighting on the same card with him or even fighting him, you know, because since he's one of the best in the world, so we'll go from there. It's kind of the era of, of the big money fight. A lot of fighters are kind of chasing you know, the biggest possible payday. But mm -hmm. you're talking more about legacy and more about being the best ever rather than trying to make the most money. Uh -huh. is, that, is that accurate? Is that kind of what you're? Are those two like parallel things, or are they diverging things? Do you think? I I I think they're parallel. You know, I, we, we, I think uh, if you become the best ever, you keep fighting, you keep coming. The money comes with it. You know, the sponsor comes with it. Everything comes with it. You just gotta do your job. You know, I, I think so. A lot of people nowadays just looking for the shortcut for the easiest way, and then that's why that's what you just see flashing in pans. You know, like they they hit this peak and then they just kind of disappear. You know, and I I never ever wanted to be that guy. You know, at the end of the day, it's uh. Taking me a little bit longer, but I like the long route, long route, hard route, you know. And it is a, it took me, what was it, ten fights, ten fights to get a title fight, and I got a title fight because of DC. So thank you, DC. Uh, <laughs> I always thank you for that, you know. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but uh, you know, I got my interim title fight because of that, and things happen for a reason, you know. At the end of the day, um, I'm in for a long, long work. I, I'm not gonna shy away from hard work, period, anytime. So. You, you let me know what to do. I think I think uh, you just got to keep winning fights and, you know, the money fights come come sooner or later. There are two other title fights on your card. Which one are you most looking forward to seeing and why? I want to see Amanda Nunes and, and Jermaine. That, that, that fight is super exciting, you know, especially if they, they both, like, Amanda has been striking lately a lot and Jermaine, Jermaine's a striker, you know. Jermaine once, uh, she knocked out a guy in boxing. So, yeah, she did. So, so it's... It's intriguing, so I, I want to see that fight for sure. Is there anything special you want for Christmas besides a win? Uh, uh, the, a cupcake the size of this table. That would be, be really dope. <laughs> Check out my YouTube, Max Bless Holloway. We're probably going to do something after that. The, a cupcake this big, I'm going to be eating it. We're going to put gold flakes on it. So it's going to be awesome. I mean, it's, it's Vegas, so you can probably find one. <laughs> find one 100%. So uh, another fight that um, is drawing a lot of attention on this card is uh, Jose Aldo dropping the bantamweight weight to fight Marlon uh, Marais. What were your initial thoughts when, when that was announced? You know, somebody you stood in against dropping that much weight to get to uh, 135. I was like, thank God I don't have to face him again. <laughs> you know, that guy's a beast. He's strong. And I, I was kind of blown away at first. I was like, oh, he's going to make 35, you know, and. And, and it's possible, you know, it's just changing your diet and this and that. So I wish nothing but the best for him, you know, but uh, uh, we see what happens. I'm excited. He, he finally, he's fighting, in my eyes, it's like fighting a clone. Him and Marlon is like the same, you know what I mean? And they're Brazilian, and they're both Brazilian. So I, I'm excited for that fight. So I, I can't wait to watch that fight too. You just mentioned that, you know, when you fought Pettis essentially for the interim title, you said, you know, thanks to DC, because uh, he dropped out of that fight. Mm -hmm. Were you and DC actually close before that, or is that some kind of experience that brought you guys together? No, me and DC wasn't close before that at all. Like, uh, uh, we kind of talked here and there, this and that, but, like, like after that, we kind of talked more, and then um, what got us close is that he invited me out to when he was doing the Ultimate Fighter, and I got to spend, like, a week with him, I think five days with him. And we came real close. That guy, he just, he doesn't let it, he, he just tease you. You know, you watch any video, he tease everybody. So I love that guy, you know, that, that, that was my kind of thing. You know, growing up with friends and, and all my friends, we always give each other a hard time. And it's just good, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a crazy friendship. When we see, you know, embedded or in fight week, you have a huge team with you. You know, uh -huh. all the guys focused on you, you do a lot of activities. Uh -huh. What about the guys that don't make the trip to the fights, the team back home? How much bigger is this sort of uh, the training the training group back at home? And are there other guys that, you know, you wish you could bring out on the road as well? It's huge. I wish I could bring everybody, you know. But I ain't making that D.C. money yet. So, D.C., let me know the secrets so I can bring out everybody. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, we, we got a huge team. You know, I'd like, guys come out. We'd have a huger, huger, huger team if guys came out. And I'm grateful for them. And they always know. I always try to make sure that... Uh, they, they feel it when we get home, you know, we always try to go and get dinner or lunch or hang out or just spend time, you know, outside the gym, away from the gym where where it's just crazy, you know, sometimes the gym is just in, insane, so we always try to do stuff outside of the gym.
you know, in football, if a quarterback has a good year, they generally buy their offensive line something. Yeah. Uh, is there something that you've ever done for the guys that travel with you or for the team? You know, thank them for all the time? Oh yeah, all the time, all the time. We do. I always make sure I take care, take good care of them. You know, it, it, even if it's too small stuff. You know, like catching dinners, whatever it is. But that's just what you gotta do. You know, you just. It's just being a decent human being, you know. You take care of people who take uh, who take care of you, and these guys, these guys take care of me. Behind the scenes, they do a lot. They do very a lot, you know. Like I said after the uh, after the Frankie fight, you know, you know, plot twist. I ain't the conductor of Bless Express. I'm actually just chilling. I'm actually one of the passengers. These guys are the ones making the call, making sure everybody getting on and and whatever. So it's uh, it's just I got I got an amazing team. I'm just grateful. I'm blessed. We hear a lot of talk about like the Mount Rushmore of MMA. If there were four guys up there, and, you know, you're you're well on your way to being in that elite level. But what would be more important to you to be on the Mount Rushmore of MMA or in the Mount Rushmore of sort of Hawaiian culture and history? Uh, I think so. I uh, probably for for Hawaiian Hawaiian culture for sure. I just want to I, I just want to make sure uh, show these kids that look we're in a we're in a rock in the middle of nowhere. And you can and you can do great things, but you gotta be willing to put in the work, and you'll be willing to do it. You know, I, I just wanna give them the opportunities and whatever, and, and give back some way after this is done, and just uh, inspire the next generation. You know, that's what that's what life is about. Life is about inspiring someone. You know, you wanna when you leave this world, you wanna uh, you wanna make it better than when you came in. So that that that's the end goal.